Okay, so today's daf is Nun Vav. We're going to start where we left off yesterday, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines down from the top of the page where it says, Amar Rav Yehuda. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, Rav Yehuda said that Rav said, Kol ir shiyesh ma'alot umoradot, any place, any city that has ascending and descending parts, in other words, where it has hills. It's not a flat plain, but you have to go up and down a lot. Adam uvehema sheba metim mehen. People and animals that live in the city are going to die in half their life, in half their lifespan. Why? Because of the stress of walking up, walking down, walking up, walking down. So, so the Gemara asks, Salka datach, could it really be? Metim salka datach, they really die so young? Ela ema mazkinim It doesn't mean that they actually die at half their lifespan. What it means is that they age prematurely. In other words, they become old earlier in life because of the strain of having to walk up and down and up and down these hills. Amar Rav Huna, Breder Rav Yehoshua, Rav Huna, the son of Rav Yehoshua said, Hanei moliyata debe berei udve narash. He said that this area... Um, between, you know, this hilly area in between the uh, Bey Beire and Bey Narash, that these two cities that he would have to, to uh, go between all the time, he said, Azaknun, they made me old. In other words, he had to travel between these two cities all the time, and the travel was very hilly, so he had to go through a lot of up and down and up and down, and because of that, he aged prematurely, he became weak uh, at a younger age. Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, Bali Rabbah. If you come in order to square the city, remember, if you have a circular city, you have to transform it into a square city. So the way that you do it is you draw a square around the circle, basically. You take the circle and you place the circle into the smallest square that it would fit in, essentially. Um, so, the, so it says when you do that, olam, you do it by the directions of the world. You make the north of it to the north of the world and the south of it to the south of the world. Now, obviously, this doesn't seem to add much of a chidush. I mean, if you're doing a south side of the city, it's to the south side of the world. What other south is there? Did we learn that yeah. it doesn't matter if you do the we other learned that, We learned that if the city is square, but its sides don't line up with so north and south, they're tilted, that you don't have to square it differently. But if you're going to come square the uh, circular city, you shouldn't do it on an angle. In other words, you should do the squaring with a, a, a side that's a north side, south side, uh, west side, east side, rather than having it angled so that there's a southeast and a northwest and a whatever. So it's a, it, it's, th- this is the ideal way is to have it, since you have a choice, you have an option of how you're going to draw the walls, so you draw them as well. Because, because we learned from the cities of Levi'im that they're squared. But that we square, that those are squared. So we learned from that that we also square the uh, the Tuchum city. It's not on the, on the survey itself on the own. Well, it, it helps, but it add, it actually adds onto the city because the let's say if you have a circle and you make a square around it, you get extra corners, right? It adds on, it adds on part of the city. It's, and I, depending I, on which yeah. direction you do it, it's going to add somewhere versus somewhere. Like else. if you have a circle, you could put the the walls like this, slanted to diagonally like this, right. and it would in be the same. Case, I mean, in, in which with case, a circle, you can draw the square anyway. So it's saying draw the square according to the directions of the world. Right? So don't draw them on a slant, which right. would work. You know, that would work, would work but, but, it, but that's not the way to do it. So it would put the additional places somewhere else. In other cool. words, you would, you would not have this. You wouldn't have a north, places. south, west, to east, you mean? No, but also the additional That's places. true, but that wouldn't matter so much. The point, the point is, once you're deciding where to put the square, put it according to the correct directions. If it's already square and it's not facing the right directions, leave it. But if you're going to make the square and you have a choice of how to draw it, so draw it in a way that makes a north, south, east, west. In the normal way. So he says, That Taurus, in other words, he's talking about the constellations, the, uh, astro- uh, you know, the astrological, the zodiac, right? So Taurus is to the north, and Akrav Scorpio is to the south. So that's how you can tell what's north and south. If you're trying to determine which side is north and which side is south. Oh, they taught you about the stars? But, um, I, I heard, um, I was listening to this, uh, I wanted to hear how some of the, uh, this other rabbi explained it online. I listened. He said, Agala Batzafon. I said, no, it's not Agala Batzafon. <laughs> no, it's Egla. 
It's Taurus. It's this, yeah, but, yeah. not Agala. No, because he called it. The, no, that's something else. That's another constellation of the Agala. This is Egla, because Rashi because they said that it's talking about Taurus. So that assumes that you know the constellation. Yeah, you have to know the you have to know the constellations. There is Agala also. Yeah, there is. Now, okay. So it says, Rabbi Yosei, Omer Rabbi Yosei says, If you don't know how to do it, Rabbi Yosei, Olam, Rabbi Akim, and Hatikufa. So you might not know what the directions are based on the constellations. So then you can use the seasons, the travel of the sun. Ketzar, Chama Yotza Biyom Aroch, Vishokat Biyom Aroch, Zeu Pnei Tzafon, Chama Yotza Biyom Katar, Vishokat Biyom Katar, Zeu Pnei Darom. So basically, if you observe the passage of the sun, people don't pay attention to their natural environment much. But if you paid closer attention, if we paid closer attention, we would notice that during the summertime, the sun travels in a different path across the sky than it does in the winter time. In the summertime, the sun path travels on a more northerly angle, a, nor- in a, a more northerly. It, it passes always, obviously, from the east to the west. But from, right, it always passes from the east to the west, right? But if a person, we know from the map, you know, north, south, east, west. But we're talking about somebody who just they don't realize, so they want to figure it out. So if it's the summertime and they see the sun comes up from the east and it goes to the west, they know that that's north. And if they, and if it's winter time and it's going from the east to the west, they know which way is south. Since they didn't have maps necessarily to teach them, you know, the relative direction so easily. So the um, so that's so then he says Kufat Nisan Kufat Tishrei Chama Yotza B'Chatzim Mizrach Who Shagav B'Chatzim Arav and in Tishrei and Nisan the times where the days are almost equal so those are times when the sun goes through the middle of the sky it's more centered so during the summer it's to the north during the winter it's angled to the south during the uh, during the uh, even times it's t- pretty much down the middle now it's always actually tilted. If you look at the diagrams that they give you uh, in, in the... I don't think they have it in here, unfortunately, any diagram of that. Yeah. But uh, if you look at some other diagrams that, that are given, uh, they, probably the art school has the diagrams, and probably the, probably the Steinsaltz. I didn't look at the Steinsaltz, but they'll sh- there are angles. In other words, the angle is all year round. There's... No? Yeah, they have the angles. Yeah, so the angles of the angle of the sun's motion is all, it's always angled leaning to the north. It's just more southern, southern uh, you know, leaning and more northern leaning, but it's always sort of on an angle that's like this. The way that, and they show it in there. Now, Shene'em um, as it says, Holech el darom v'sovev el tzafon, Holech el darom bayom v'sovev el tzafon balayla. That because of the way that the sun goes across the sky, so it's Holech el darom, it goes to the south in the daytime. In other words, because of the angle that it showed there, the curvature, it comes from a more northerly spot and it ends up in a more southern area. And then it comes back to a more northern point. When the sun rises in the morning, it's, it's more to the north than where it's set in the evening because it comes across in a curve. Okay, so the, where, where it starts in the morning is more to the north. Where it ends is going to be more to the south. Although the whole arc will be more to the north during the summer and more to the south during the winter. But the general path is always curved such that, and it's always angled a little bit such that it starts a little bit more north than where it ends. And then, so to speak, it's, it goes back to the north to begin its journey again the next day. That's the way that they're interpreting Pasuk. Around and around goes the wind. Here it's interpreting wind as direction. That the Gemara says this is talking about the east and the west. Sometimes the, tra- the sun traverses the horizon, the eastern and western horizon, and sometimes it almost seems like it's hidden behind the eastern and western Western horizon. In other words, because it's so far to the north, let's say, that it, it doesn't really go across. You, you don't really see easily from the, the observer doesn't really see this, the rising and the setting of the sun as easily because it's so far to the north at certain times that he won't perceive it. Okay, so it's sometimes it does cross over the horizon of the, from east to west, and sometimes it doesn't because it's coming from such a northern point that it's not easily observable uh, to the person who's standing in a normal place. Amar of Mishashi, Rav Mishashi says, These rules are not true. The tiny, because it says in the bright, that because he said it's never happened that the sun has 
actually risen from the absolute northeast or from the absolute southeast. It's never happened that the sun has set in the absolute uh, in the absolute uh, northwest or the absolute southwest. In other words, it's never so far to an extreme that it doesn't cross over the observable horizons of east and west. It always crosses over the observable horizons of east to west. Amar Shmuel Shmuel says, "Ain't Kufat Nisan nofelet ella ba arba ariv ehayom." That Kufat Nisan, which is the uh, the spring, the vernal equinox, okay, only falls out in four possible times: o b'tchilat hayom, o b'tchilat alayla, o b'chatzia hayom, o b'chatzia alayla. Either six. Now we're talking about a perfect day, so either six a.m. or six p.m. or twelve a.m. or twelve p.m. Those are the only options for when it's going to fall out. And since that's the case, Now, this is based on the fact that every tkufa, every, every season is 91 days and seven and a half hours after the previous one. Okay, so what ends up happening is that since it's seven and a half hours, it's always going to fall out. So if the previous one fell out at 6 a.m., then the next one is going to fall out at 1.30 p.m. Because it's going to be seven and a half hours later. Okay, if the previous one fell out at 12 o'clock midnight, okay, then this one is going to fall out at 7.30 a.m. It's always going to be seven and a half hours later. So that's why it says either it's going to be, the summer is either going to be 1.30 or 7.30. Ve'ed kufat tishrei, and again tishrei, the next, uh, spring, the next season is going to be fall, and fall is going to come out seven and a half hours later, either obviously 91 days and seven and a half uh, hours later than the previous uh, one. So since the previous one could only be 1.30 or 7.30, Okay, so this one we can already know is Ela Obu Shalosh Shaot Obatesha Shaot. It's either going to be at 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Ben Bayom, Ben Balayla. Either day or night. Ven Tkufat Tevet Nofelet Ela Obi Arba Umehaitza Obe Eser Umehaitza Ben Bayom, Ben Balayla. And again, the winter will begin at either 10.30 or 4.30, whether day or night, because of the same principle that it's always going to fall seven and a half hours later than the previous because there's no separation between one season and the next except for 91 days and seven hour, seven and a half hours and a tkufa a season doesn't pull from its friend except a half an hour what does that mean it pulls a half an hour what that means is that there was a there's an interesting concept which uh, we don't really know the basis for it uh, nowadays, but they had an idea that each hour of the day was ruled by a different planet or a different heavenly body. So, um, so the so Rashi explains it in uh, in some detail at the bottom uh, that the, the starting from the first hour, it's uh, it's going to be one. It's going to be the. Uh, the first star and then in the second hour it's going to be the moon and then it's going to be Saturn and then it's going to be Mercury and then it's going to be um, uh, the sun okay so right so we, we don't really know what that means we, we don't want to mean that they're you know we don't really understand what they meant that it was that it rules over that time we don't there's no observable phenomenon that tells us what it means this was probably the belief of everybody back then. I, like the astronomy of Shmuel. Shmuel was known to be one of the expert astronomers among the rabbis. He learned it probably also from the nations of the world. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was later. Aren't those the They are, but they only had seven. They had seven what they called kochve lechet, which means moving stars, moving heavenly bodies, that they believed that each hour of the day, so 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. was one, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. was another one, and that they rotated in the cycle. So because they rotate in the cycle, if we know, for instance, that they rotate continuously with a a cycle of seven and another seven and another seven, Right, that there's a continuous, uh, there's going to be this continuous kind of a cycle. So what will end up happening is that uh, when you get to the next season, since it's seven and a half, uh, you know, seven and a half so hours later. So what he's saying is that whatever kochav. Whatever uh, star was the was in charge of the hour that the previous kufa came, the previous season came, it'll be in the middle of that 
stars duty again. It just happens to work out that way mathematically. If you count up all the hours and you divide them up by seven, it will turn out that this la- the seven and a half hours tacked on that you know that make the that that the by which the next season is later than this season is going to result that let's say the Levana, the moon was the ascendant uh, star at the time that the uh, that the that spring started. So then the moon will also be the ascendant star at the time that the uh, uh, the next season comes, but it will be by ha- half an hour into it. Okay, so that's, that's so what he's saying. Are you talking about seasons? Or is it seasons? Seasons. Or just periods in the The seasons. seasons. No, they're talking about seasons. I mean, this ongoing... Kufa doesn't necessarily mean seasons. Kufa means periods. Like, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a time period. Yeah, well, they're, they're definitely saying uh, here to Kufa means seasons. Yeah, oh, really? for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, because they're saying that it's 91 days in between, and we know that. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, but Amar Shmosh says, Enechat Kufa Nisan Shnofel, but Tzedek, that if the Tkufa of Nisan, the season of Nisan, which is which means spring, falls out in Tzedek, in the, in the hour of Jupiter, She'ena Mishabert the Ilanod, Enechat Kufa Tevich Shnofel, but Tzedek, She'ena Miyabesh the Dezraim. If Jupiter is the time that the, that spring begins, that means the trees are going to be ruined. And if the su- if the uh, winter begins in Jupiter, that means that the seeds are going to be dried out. So these are beliefs that they had based on what they you know with the scientific uh, understanding of the relationship between these stars and agriculture. But we don't really understand where they got these ideas from. The who did you led the vana? But that's only if Rosh Chodesh also f- fell out, the Molad, in other words, when the moon first appeared, was either during the hour of the moon or during the hour of Jupiter also. So these are calculations that they had that we don't really understand where they got them from. That's kind of a tangent in our, uh, in our study, but interesting. Now, we turn to Nun Vav Amud Bet, Tanur Rabbanan, the rabbis taught. Now we get into heavy-duty geometry, and I know that we all love mathematics, so you're going to have a great time. Now. It's really hard to get your... Yeah, I like geometry too. I like geometry too, but it's hard to follow. Yeah, cotangents and tangents, yeah, and sine and cosine and all that good stuff. Now, Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, Ha-merabea eta'ir ose'otakimin tavla. You make, when you want to square the city, okay? They used to try to square the circle. That was a Greek thing, but you can't do that. Okay. Yeah, um, you cannot do that. You can't do that. But you can square the city if you put the line around the circle. You can't actually square the circle. Now, um, what you do is you make a square uh, board, the Joseiro Merabeat Tchumin, and then you square the Tchumin. Yeah, they have a lot of drawings in there. Yeah, they have them in the back up here too. I'm going to show it. So first you square the city, and then you square the Tchumin. You make them like a board, a square board. Okay? I'm just going to read it and then I'm going to show you what he means. And when he measures, don't go from the middle of the side to measure the techum because then you lose the corners. Rather, what you do is you bring another square of 2,000 amot by 2,000 amot and you put it in the corner. I'll show you what this means in a second. Now, this sounds really, really confusing. So let me show you exactly what it's going to mean. And actually, once you see the drawing, it kind of fits better and makes more sense. What they're talking about here is the following problem that we want to determine how to draw the Tuchumin here. But the problem is that if we draw the Tuchumin simply, what's the most primitive way to draw the Tuchumin is, oh, I know, we'll just put 2,000 amot here, 2,000 amot here, 2,000 amot here, and 2,000 amot here. Right? Right. That makes sense, right? That's what we could do. But the only problem is if we do that, what about this side? What about the corner? What about here? Okay? What about here? You're going to lose that because you're just doing a straight line. So it's saying don't go straight out from the side to the north, to the south, to the west, to the east. Because then what about this here? What if I'm standing here? Why don't I get any, any to home here? I don't get anything here. Right? So what does it say? So he says what we do is we draw squares in the corners like this. So we draw a square in the upper, let's say, upper right-hand corner. And it, we, the, the point of which, the lower left-hand corner of the square that we're drawing, the imaginary square, touches the upper right-hand corner of the city that we drew. And we draw another square 
in the lower left hand side with, where the right side of it is actually flush with the left side of the city. See that? So there, and then what do we do? We draw a diagonal. Okay, we draw a diagonal. Now what ends up happening if we draw a diagonal like that? So if we draw, and then when we draw a diagonal, we draw a diagonal out not 2,000 demos, because that wouldn't go the whole way. If this square is 2,000 by 2,000 demos, right. then a diagonal won't go the whole way. We need, to make it 20, we need to make it, um, it's going to have to be 1.4. In the Talmudic uh, terms, they put it 1.4 times. It's going to have to be significantly longer. So instead of it being 2,000 amot, it's actually going to be 2,800 amot. Okay, approximately. We're, they, they use rough numbers. So approximately 2,800 amot diameter. Okay? And then you're going to have a square of 2,000 amot by 2,000 amot with, 2000, with, with a 2,800 uh, diameter. And really what ends up happening is, and you do that on both sides. So if you leave from the corner on an angle, you're going to actually be able to walk out 2,800 amot to the corner of the square that you created and up here. you don't do that. You do it. This you is what do you do. do and then what do you do? To make the entire techum, you then draw a square including these squares. So you just made the square, you just made the tachum much bigger. So therefore, if you leave from one of the corners of the city, you have 2,800. If you leave from one of the straight sides of the city, you'll get 2,000 amot going out. Okay? So the, so, but basically by making these two, cor adding these two squares in either corner and drawing a diagonal, what you end up adding is you make your entire square larger because then you end up with, so to speak, nine squares around the middle square of the city. But you say you so make a circle for the sake of the corners. Right. And you, and since you already squared the circle, so to speak, right, you already made a square, you already added 400 amot in this corner. So from the actual edge of the city to the edge of the square that you made around the city is 400 amot. And from that corner to the corner of the square that you drew, the imaginary square that you drew above, is another 2,800 amot. So in reality, how much can you walk from the, from the edge of the residential area all the way to the corner? 3,200 amot. And what are you really supposed to be able to walk? 2,000 amot. And you're able to 3,200. So the Gemara says, therefore, you're adding 1,200 amot unto what you really would be able to do if you calculate it this way. So two on this side. From the edge of the circular city to the corner, that's 400 amot. Then from the corner all the way to the far corner of the box that you created, the made-up box, is another 2,800. So you're going to be gaining, you're going to have 3,200 amot, which gives you 1,200 more than you really deserve, so to speak, according to the laws of Nechumin. So that's what the Gemara says. Now when we go back, we can understand what it meant. So when it says, don't go from, don't go straight when you draw the Tuchum, but go from the, and don't go from the corners, because if you go from the corners, what ends up happening, you're going to lose, because if you go, to, if you go diagonally 2,000 amot and you draw a square, it's actually going to be less than 2,000 amot. Because right. the diagonal is only 2,000 amot. It has to be longer. Than it has to be saw. longer. It has to be 2,800 amot to make the 2,000. So, so that's what you do. Jump. And then what if you only had, what if you only had the, the corners? That wouldn't be enough. So we end up making a square around the square of the city. But the way that we determine the outer border of the square is by making a diagonal from the square that we made around the city to 2,800 amot out. Okay, that's, that's the way that we do it. And so therefore, so, what ends up happening so is... Here, so basically, from here to it's 2,000 amount, or it's 2,800? Uh, so well, we the circle's in the middle, but this should be... A, there's no other circle, because you made another circle. Where did you get that but other circle? But there is an arc that... Uh, that's, from a that's, from a different, that's from a different thing. We're only looking at this ah. case. Yeah, don't look at that case. This this case. No, but uh, what you were showing... Yeah, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Okay. I, I just showed that for an example, but this is the real one. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, this is the real okay. one. Yeah. Right. yeah. So... Mm -hmm. And the reason they couldn't do just 2,000 and 2,000 is that they needed that. They need the corners. You want to have the corners also. If you just did 2,000 from the sides 2000 out. 2,000, then you could do another 2,000, 2,000, but you wouldn't be sure that you're... You would be short from square. certain... In other words, no from square, every right? point of the square, you want to have at least 2,000 right. so, so the only way you can do that well, is if you actually make 2,800 on the diagonal. The diagonal. Right. Oh, and square. then you draw around it a huge, a huge square. So, so doing it that way, that's you gain a lot from that. So it actually it makes perfect sense once you see it, yeah. but uh, it's hard to talk out. So Amar Abayi says, Mishkach Adab Matadav, 
And where do you find this calculation that you gain 1,200? Obviously, only when the measurement is 2,000 mm by 2,000 mm, because we're assuming this, we're assuming a certain size to the city here. That otherwise, in a city that's bigger, you know, the discrepancy what, where the circle is bigger, then the square ar around the circle will be bigger, and then obviously the 2,000 mm, everything will change based on that. So, for example, if you had a 3,000, if the if the city was a 3,000 mm instead of 2,000, then I believe that the space between the circle and the square that you make around the city would be would be 600 mm instead of four, and then from the point is 2,800, so 2,800 plus 600 is going to be 3,400 instead of 32. So it's going to vary based on the, on the size of the circle. There's no question. But the point is that in this case with the 2,000, which is like the standard, you're going to get 1,200 extra amot than you, more than you deserve. Tanya says, "Now write the Amar Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yossi says, 'Tehum are levi'im al paim ama. The tehum, the border of the cities of levi'im, is 2,000 amot. Tze mehen elef ama migrash. You need to deduct from them." A thousand amam migrash. Migrash was the area around the Levitical city that wasn't used for anything. Nimtam migrash ravia vashar sadatuchramim. So what you end up having is the now what you needed, what was required was a one thousand amma wide strip around the city that was to lay fallow at all times. It was not to be used or cultivated for anything. And then the rest of the surrounding area of the city would be Sadotu Kramim. That's where you would have your fields and you would have your Kramim, you would have your vineyards. So he says, though, something funny. He says, He says that, that, the, that the Migrash, the empty space, is going to be a fourth and the rest is going to be Sadotu Kramim, but it shouldn't be a fourth, it should actually be a half. But we're going to see in a second. So, where do we get this from? So it says from the wall of the city and out, 1,000 amot around. Do you have to surround the city with a strip of 1,000 amot wide? Nimtsam Migrash Ravia. So what do you mean that the Migrash is a fourth? How could it be a fourth? If we know that the total area is 2,000 and 1,000 amot is around the city, empty, how is, that a, how is that a quarter of the total? It should be a half of the total. Because the area of the Sadot Ukhramim, in other words, if we look here at the, if we look here at the layout, well, the problem is that this is kind of a, this is kind of the, where they've already clarified what the situation is. So it's, it's not as easy to see it. But, um, but basically, if you have a city in the middle, and around the city you have a strip of a thousand, and around that you have another thousand, we're assuming. So it's a half of the space. It's not a quarter of the space, obviously. Um, that empty space is a half. So, uh, so he says, Palgahabe, Amar Rava Bar Adam Mishokha'a. So he says, Amar Rava Rava says, Bar Adam Mishokha'a. That Bar Ada, the surveyor, Asberali, he explained it to me. Mashkahatla, you can find it. Bimata, Dahabia, Tre, Alfea, Tre, Alfea. So he says, you can, so he says, if you have a city that's 2,000 amot by 2,000 amot. So he says, Techum kamahavya shitzal. How much is the Techum going to be? And again, I'll talk it out and then we'll look at it. So Techum kamahavya, how much is the border going to be of the city? It's going to be 16 million amot square, actually. Okay, we'll see why in a second. And then, and then he says, yeah. And then, this is not talking about walking now. It's just talking about the Levi, cities of Levi'im. Kiranot kamahavyan. And then he's going to say, how much are the uh, how much is the uh, are the corners going to take up? Shitsar, it's going to be sixteen thousand, sixteen million rather. We'll see in a second. Dal t'maniyadit chumin v'ar ba'adikranot. If you take away the eight of the borders and four of the corners, kam mahave tresar. You're going to have twelve million. Nimtzam migrash ravia. So let's so let's see exactly what he's talking about here now. So here you have square. You have the area. So you have these are the corners that it's talking about, okay? And these are the tehum that it's talking about. The tehum means that around the city, okay, at each north, west, south, and east, at each place, there's a, the city itself is two thousand square amot, which is four million amot square. Four million amot. Now you have another square to its south, to its north, to its west, and to its east, each of which is 
also 4 million amot because it's going to be 2,000 amot squared. 2,000 times 2,000. Okay, so you're going to have 4 million amot. So if you, now the corners also, in other words, if you make this a tabla, you make it an entire table, so the corners also are going to be, each of them, 4 million amot. So what do you end up with? You end up with 4 million four, uh, times 9, right? You're going to end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm sorry, 8, rather, because you're going to have the, uh, you're going to have 3 here, 3 here, and 2 here on either side. So, and the total of that is going to be, you're going to have these, these squares, so how, what's the total then? Let's see, of the, of the kranot, of the corners, the 4 million times 4 is 16 million. Uh, and then you have 4 techumin, the 4 million times 4 million is 16 million. Okay? So you're going to have a total of 32 million around the city, the city itself being 4 million. Right. Wow. Okay, in amot, these are, because you're doing 2,000 amot square. Now, what the Gemara is saying is, what we really need to do is, we need to cut a piece of a thousand amot wide around the city, because that's what the Torah says we need to do. Okay. Now, a thousand amot wide, a, a, a thousand amot around the city, it's going to be two thousand amot long, obviously, even though it's a thousand amot wide, because the uh, because it's going to be along the length of the city. So what, what's going to end up happening is you will have the uh, you you will have the uh, that area of, me, of around the city is going to be two million on each side, isn't it? Because you're going to have a total of eight million. That's what it should be, right? Because it's going to be two million here, two million here, two million here, two million here. I had sixty. Isn't that correct? Less half. We still come out to the same thing. Is, what do you mean? Is the answer eight million? It should be eight million. I mean, yeah, right. Because be, because you've taken with the with the the one army with the whatever the one you're taking half of each of these squares. Right. So all the right. squares add up to eighteen. Uh, to right. So you're going to end up with eight. eight. That's the point. You're going to end up with eight million. I was just doing it mathematically, okay. but right. yeah, but you can see it. You can see it graphically too that it's going to end up with eight. So that the total area is going to be eight million. Now you're subtracting that from the surrounding area, which we already said was thirty-two. Right, because we're not including the city itself. So we're saying we had 32 already, now we subtract eight, so what are we gonna have left? Is 24, right? Is that correct? Am I right? Yes. Okay, so that's what it means when the Gemara said you have 16 for the corners and 16 for the borders, because the borders is what it calls the pieces that are to the no directly to the north, south, east, and west of the city, and what's in the corners of the of the square that's created out of that is called the Quranot, it's called the corners. But it's actually equal to the, uh, it's actually equal to the borders of the city itself. So therefore you have 16, 16, subtract the eight, okay? In other words, if you subtract out the eight uh, and the four, uh, and four from the corners, in other words, if you, sub so then what do you end up having? Kamahave, what are you gonna have? Teresa. <coughs> So you're going to have 12 million. Okay, so how does that work that you're going to have 12 million? You're saying subtract out the... Wait, where's the, where's the case? Okay, here. So he says if you take out... Now here they have it graphically. So if you take out the... From here, this piece. So we already said this piece should be 8 million, right? Right. Right, and if we're not including four of the kranot... We're not. We, we're taking away. In other words, uh, the um, we're taking away. Wait, how is he? The question that I have is, how is he coming up with this number then? Because we already had sixteen, and we had sixteen, so that should be thirty-two, right? Then he's saying take away eight of the tichumin, which we understand because here you're taking away two. Well, let's take a take a look. All right, here you're taking away one, two. And four, so you're taking away four here, taking away four here, right? So you're taking away four from this, three more, three more. Seven, ten. So yeah, so what's the total? Because, 
So, so it is rough. So because he says, if you take away from if you if you're taking away four from the corners and eight from the tehumin, so we see why it's eight from the tehumin because there's eight parts of the tehumin, the tehum part that's going to be overlapped, and one, two, three, four. I see what he means. Okay, so you're going to take away these four boxes from the tehum, which is actually a quarter of each one of these corners is going to be taken away, which is let's say uh, we said it's a million amot is going to be taken away from there. Right? And you're going to take away half of each of these. And so that, that means you're going to take away 2 million, 2 million, uh, 2 million, and 2 million. So you're actually taking away a total then of 8 million just from the Tichumin, but you're adding this part here. So you're actually going to be taking away a total of 12 million. So it's right. In other words, this area is actually going to be 12 million, not 8. It would have been 8 if it, if it didn't encompass such a large area. But because it's encompassing these corners as well, it's going to be, end up being 12 million. So that's why he's saying what you're left with is 12 million. Okay, in this area. Because you're chopping off from everything else to make this area around the, uh, around the city. Because th- you want to make this, this is one ama wide, this line that's going around, but it's going, it's cutting through all of these other areas because of the spacing, so it ends up taking up a whole 12 million square amount, this, which is correct. Okay, now we see it graphically, it's easier to see graphically. So, what happens now? So, that being the case, but so nimtza migrash ravia. So, therefore, the migrash is a quarter. But wait a second, still, it's not. It's still not a quarter. Why is it still not a quarter? Because it's, it's 32 million the total. Right? And 12 million is not a quarter of 32 million. In fact, it's more, he says, it's more than a third. It's more than a third, because actually, 3 times 12 would be 36 million. Right? So, it's more than a third. It's not a quarter. So, So, fine. Take the four million square amot of the... Or take the four million amot that we have in the area in the city itself and add that. So now what do you have? A total of 36 million amot against the migrash, that area, that strip that goes around, which is only 12 million. So still it's a third. It's not a quarter. No, it's a quarter. Why is that a quarter? 36, 12 million 12. out of 36? Oh, no, yes. no, it's only a third. Still, right? It's still a third. So now, ah, now we get to the answer. There's only one way we can solve this, which is, you're assuming all along that we're talking about a square city. Then, that's how the geometry works out. However, we're not talking about that. We are talking about we are talking about a circular city. How much is, how much more is the circ, is the square over the igul over the circular? Ravia, a quarter. Dal ravia minayu, subtract a quarter from it. Pashulhu tisha. So instead of a twelve million area around the city, you're going to have only a nine million v'tisha mitlatin v'shita riv ahave. So then it works out perfectly because if you add the area of the city itself, which we're saying is going to be is still going to equal because we're, it's still going to equal because we square it. It's still going to equal the four million. You add that to the square that's around it, which is the thirty-two million. You have thirty-six million. But the migrash around the city, we don't square because why would we square it? There's no requirement to square it. In other words, so since the area around, and I'll show you. Since the area that we're cutting is around like this now, so look, it doesn't take all of the quarter of this Karen. It doesn't take all of the quarter of this. It doesn't take the totality of these pieces. Uh, it doesn't take it, you right. You see that? Ah, uh, versus when it's a square. Then so it turns okay. out that it's only going to take nine million amot instead of twelve million, and therefore we're going to have a perfect situation where it is That's one quarter of the total area in the Levitical city, and that is a perfect place to conclude for today. Ah.